So the media have been targeting Republicans, and on Monday, HuffPost had to delete an entire article after they fell for a bogus anti-Trump memo. The fake memo claimed Donald Trump's presidential campaign paid thousands of dollars to boost itself on the popular website Reddit. Then on Thursday, the New York Times tried to blame Sarah Palin for the 2011 shooting of Congresswoman Gabby Giffords, even though that connection had been debunked years ago. Joe Concha writes about media for The Hill, and he joins us here live. Joe, did you hear anything that internally at the New York Times that there was consternation by reporters that this had actually happened at their paper? In terms of internal debate of whether it happened, right? Or, or not? just like the dismay about it, because even in their own reporting in the paper, they had actually debunked this years ago. No, because this came from the editorial board. It didn't come from Charles Blow or Paul Krugman, a partisan type of columnist. Mm -hmm. This is the heart and brains of the New York Times saying this is what definitively happened. Mm -hmm. And then even PolitiFact said there was no evidence of no. this whatsoever after the fact. Here are my problems with what the New York Times has done since. The story has not come down. Remember when Reagan said, tear down this wall? Right. <laughs> the New York Times needs to tear down this story, at least HuffPost. They took down the story. That's right. the responsible thing to do. You go online right now, the New York Times, you still see that story. I say to the New York Times, tear down this story. And by the way, the correction's at the bottom, not the top. So anybody who reads right. it thinks they're reading fact until they get to the bottom. I remember having been a press secretary for a long time, when you finally get a reporter to actually run a correction, the correction, you know, especially if it was like weekly newspapers, it would run the next week and it would be in a box and you could barely see it. But I do think the New York Times has taken a bit of a hit because of social media. So the right has finally sort of caught up with the left on social Social media and now a lot of people know that this is what the New York Times did. The blowback was overwhelming and what got their attention is when somebody like MSNBC's Chris Hayes says this is nonsense right. right so then they're saying this isn't just right coming after us because of the New York Times everybody had a problem with this if the problem in these situations is that there's an old saying that a lie can go halfway around the world before the truth can even get its pants on right the allegation always sticks the exoneration not so much I've even found myself you so like let's we'll, we'll talk about HuffPost for a second so they see this memo they run the article and I understand what it's like they're trying to get to the story first but I found myself even even more reticent to actually react to any articles even if I'm just commenting on Twitter because it seems like most of these articles have to be revised in some way. Oh, it always, it seems. It's now the new pattern because we're in a world now where it's quantity over quality because we're dealing with technology, online information. Everybody always talks well, about... Well, how they get paid, right? You get paid by the click. By the click, exactly. And by... I remember at Mediate, we had guys that would have to push out like 10, 15, 20 stories a day right. because you got to constantly feed the beast. Right, and that's not, it's not easy to keep up with that. Do you think the media has any sort of... Um, time to reflect after what happened this past week and will they be a slightly more careful on both sides? I'm not just blaming the left. Can I take an old VCR term? <laughs> Rewind the tape to November 9th of 2016 and we heard about soul searching and getting it right and being more careful with our stories and triple checking. It's only gotten worse because there's never any accountability. The news cycle moves so fast, 10 times faster than when you were press secretary. So I by know. The, no one remembers the mistake because we're on the story 5, 6, and 7. Yeah, so I talked to Sean Spicer, um, the the current press secretary and I told him like even when I left in January of 2009 I didn't even have a Twitter account so even though the principles of the job are the same the tactics have changed dramatically and it's hard to keep up but you, at least you have a way to fight back now where, that a lot more people can see it than ever before and I think that's why President Trump continues to tweet everybody has a megaphone that said, the president needs to step back and is tweeting a little bit because at last check, it was great for him during the election. No one would argue that. He could bypass the media, bypass the, the whole filter. But now that he's president, he doesn't have to do this as much anymore. He has the ultimate bully pulp, but he's the most powerful right. man in the world. But I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of an outlier on that. I think that, he, that if he wants to tweet, I think that he's, it's, he's very transparent. Do you think it's done more harm or good for him since he's been elected, his tweets? I think it is, uh, well, if you get a special counsel, that's probably not very good. That would be like a net negative. But I think overall, Communication-wise, it's a net plus for him. He just needs to control it a little bit more. Everything in moderation, Dana. All right. All right, Joe. Thank you so much. Good to see you.